I'm betting that Microsoft will not like what I'm about to say. Do not use Python and Excel to wrangle your data. Wait, before you click away from the video, just be clear on this point. I love Python and Excel. I think it might be the most impactful feature to be added to Excel in a very, very long time, maybe ever. That being said, I wanna provide you with my perspective based on my more than two decades of experience in technology and more than a decade in hands-on analytics. By the way, just in case you're unfamiliar with the term, data wrangling means everything that you need to do to acquire, clean, combine, enrich, and transform your data so that you can do analytics on it. In particular, data wrangling is super important for things like machine learning, data science, and all forms of advanced analytics. You spend a lot of time doing data wrangling when you're doing these sorts of things. As with any other technology, Python and Excel is constrained by its architecture. So let's go over Python and Excel's architecture and discover why, at the time of this recording, you should not use Python and Excel to do your data wrangling. All right, so I'm gonna walk through the Python and Excel architecture at a high level. And first up, we need to start with the basics, Python code. And what we can see right here is a screenshot of some Python code. And this is legit Python and Excel code. I built this code for a particular class that I taught a while back, and it shows you some pretty standard data wrangling kinds of things that you're doing. You're taking a data frame or a table of data, you're filtering it down, you're creating a pivot table with it, you're sorting it, and then you're doing a little bit of transformation that's specific to Python here. So basically all the steps at a high level that you normally do with all any sort of data wrangling code in Python. Now here's what happens. When you hit control enter in your workbook, what ends up happening is, is that code is not actually executed on your local laptop. What ends up happening is that your code and the data that it's operating on is bundled up and then sent up to Microsoft's cloud. So it's actually uploaded from your laptop across the interwebs to Microsoft Azure, which is Microsoft's cloud environment. And then what ends up happening is Microsoft receives that code and data and spins up what is known as a secure container. And for our purposes, just think of a secure container as a lockdown little mini computer, like a little mini laptop. And that's where your code is actually run. So Python then executes in the Microsoft cloud, it transforms your data, it cleans it, it does machine learning, whatever you want it to do. And then the results are returned back to your laptop. So here's the thing we have to keep, we have to remember the architecture of Python and Excel at the time of this recording is completely dependent on Microsoft Azure, Microsoft's cloud platform. So you have to upload your code and data. It's got a process in the cloud and then it's got to be returned. And this is super important because this constrains your use cases. And in particular, what we're talking about here is the data wrangling use case as of April 2024, the time that I'm making this video. And what I'm going to tell you here is right now, if you have access to Python and Excel, don't use Python to do your data wrangling right now. And the reason for this is twofold. First up, you have to upload and download your code and data. And as your data and your code gets larger and more complicated, this upload and download process adds time. It adds what's known as latency. It just takes longer to load everything up and then load it back down. And then secondarily, and maybe even more importantly, at the time of this recording, the secure container, that little computer, is actually quite small. To be completely honest, most people's laptops, even if you work at a company that doesn't necessarily buy you really top-end hardware, has way more power than the secure container, has more memory, has more CPU, all that sort of thing. The container right now for the public preview of Python and Excel is actually pretty small. So if you were to actually use Python and Excel to do some really cool and interesting things, you might not be super impressed with its performance and you might be like, ah, no way. I'm not, no, no, I'm not going to recommend it for my team, my clients, my company, whoever, because of that. So keep that in the back of your mind. The container is small. Now compare using Python for your data wrangling to something that I like a lot, which is Excel Power Query. Now, comparatively speaking, Power Query has no upload download, and also it runs on your laptop. And as I just said, your laptop more than likely is more powerful than the container that runs in the Azure cloud that runs the Python code. And more than likely, if your laptop isn't like super old, it's way more powerful. So you get a lot of benefit for just saying, look, I'm going to go ahead and use Power Query and I'm just going to run locally. I'm going to use the power of the laptop, at least in April 2024 and probably for probably likely the rest of 2024. 2025, we'll have to see what Microsoft does. And I'm going to talk more about that later. Next up, another data wrangling option for you is structured query language, SQL, or as the smart people call it, SQL. <laughs> 
If you're not familiar, SQL is the lingua franca of databases, and the vast majority of organizations keep their most valuable, their most useful information in a database that is accessible via SQL. Now, the advantages of SQL for doing your data wrangling are many. For example, compared to Python and Excel, once again, there's no upload download involved. Yeah, you do have to transfer data across your network, and it's actually really, really super fast, so you don't really worry too much about that. And then most importantly, SQL or SQL runs on the database server, and usually database servers are really beefy. I mean, very, very large, lots of RAM, lots of high-speed disk, lots of CPU. SQL is a great way to do actually do your data wrangling. Now, if you're interested in understanding when maybe you should use Power Query versus SQL for your data wrangling, I have a video on my channel. I'll put a card up here to it. You can click on that if you'd like, and you can watch the considerations of whether or not you should use Power Query versus SQL for your data wrangling. Once again, in April 2024, you typically don't want to use Python for your data wrangling. You're going to want to use one of these two options. You're going to avoid upload and download load and you're going to get a lot more horsepower in your compute. Now, that being said, there are some exceptions. There always are in technology. You might want to use Python for data wrangling if your data is small, quote unquote. Small and large data, big data, those, these are all relative terms. But if it's, uh, you know, 100,000 rows or less, that's reasonably small. And you can actually move that data up and down from Azure relatively fast if you have a good internet connection. It's not that big of a deal. Also, if you don't care about the latency, the time that it takes to move things up and down, great, that's totally cool. Then you don't need to worry about it. Now, another thing that you might want to consider is maybe there's something specifically that you need to do to wrangle your data, to clean it or transform it. And Python is the best way to do that. For example, using what's known as the pandas library in Python. Pandas is a library that allows you to work with entire tables of data and manipulate them and that sort of thing. Sometimes it's just easier to do certain things in Python. If that's the case, you might want to use Python or Excel for your data wrangling. I'm going to say this, it doesn't necessarily really relate to the video, but I just want to make sure that it's crystal clear. If you're doing advanced analytics, then obviously you're going to be needing Python and Excel. <laughs> If you're doing machine learning, cluster analysis, uh, any sort of really super awesome data visualization that Excel can't do out of the box, then yeah, use Python and Excel. But the idea is that you will actually pre-process your data. You'll data wrangle everything using either SQL or Power Query first and only feed the results to Python and Excel that then gets pushed up to the cloud, processed and then downloaded again. And then lastly, in case you're curious, you're going to be testing performance and scalability, then of course you might want to use Python and Excel for your data wrangling. I'm actually going to be doing this here pretty soon on my YouTube channel for data science workloads in particular, creating a video about how Python and Excel scales right now in April 2024. You may think that I'm against Python and Excel because it runs in Microsoft's cloud, but nothing can be further from the truth. And let me explain why. So I spent eight years as a Microsoft employee. Um, please don't hold that against me. And one of the perks that I received as a Microsoft employee was I got an Azure allowance. I could spend X amount of dollars every month on various types of things that you can do in Azure. And this was like one of the best perks of all for working at Microsoft. Because many times while I was working at Microsoft, I had a need to perform analytics on data sets that were large. Not surprisingly, Microsoft has a lot of large data sets. And these data sets were so big that I could not use my laptop. I couldn't use the beefy workstation that I had underneath my desk. I needed a really, really big source of compute and memory to do the analytics that I wanted. And that's where Azure came in. I could go to Azure, spin up a little virtual computer, and these things would be huge, like 120 gigs of RAM, 16, 18, 20 CPUs, lots of disk space. I would push my data up to Azure, run all the stuff that I needed to do, get the results back, and then shut the computer down. Easy peasy. It was awesome. I, I could do whatever I wanted, basically, in terms of analytics. And the reason why I'm mentioning this is because even though the secure container that's running in Python and Excel right now is quite small, there's no reason why it has to be that way forever. And to be honest, I can't imagine that Microsoft is not going to provide the ability for people that are using Python and Excel to scale up or scale down the secure containers that they're using. This is a good thing though, right? Because what that allows is for organizations to right size Python and Excel based on their needs. So just because right now I'm saying don't use Python and Excel for data wrangling because of the small size of the container, doesn't mean that's always gonna be true. Like I said, in 2025, all bets are off. I cannot imagine once again that Microsoft's not gonna give you all this flexibility that Azure provides, and that is awesome. My next video is going to be about scaling Python and Excel for data science workloads. I'm literally going to put it to the task, visualizing data, cleaning data, creating machine learning models, performing cluster analyses, doing permutation importance, all kinds of interesting things, and reporting back to you, hey, 
what are the limits right now of Python and Excel vis-a-vis -vis these data science workloads. So when that video is ready, it'll show up here on the screen as a tile. And in the meantime, what I'll do is I'll put that video comparing Power Query versus SQL for data wrangling in Python and Excel right here so you can watch that video if you're interested. Until next time, please stay healthy, and I wish you very happy data sleuthing.